to eat. For some time, therefore, the caterpillar population increased without check. They ate so much plant food that none remained for the plant-eating dinosaurs. The plant-eating dinosaurs died of starvation, and so the meat-eating dinosaurs, which preyed on them, also starved without food. On the other hand, they may have eaten too much and died of overeating. I love the double talk in this thing. A further possibility is that uh, there were too many meat-eating dinosaurs. They ate all the plant eaters and then themselves died of hunger. One popular idea is that the little mammals of the Cretaceous were very fond of dinosaur eggs and ate so many of them that the dinosaurs died out. It has sometimes been suggested that the dinosaurs were poisoned. By who? Who poisoned them? I want to know. We'll get Columbo on that one. Other causes put forward include parasites, diseases, slip disks, shrinking brains, and greater stupidity over specialization and inability to change. In a world of evolution, an overriding uh, paradigm of material things is that they're continually changing, and dinosaurs died out because they couldn't change. I love that one. Um, where was I now? Inability to change. The latest idea in 1982 is that a gradual warming of the earth led to premature cataracts in the eyes of the dinosaurs. <laughs> Dinos uh, cataracts. They eventually became blind and perished before they were old enough to reproduce. Terrible thing, you know. Uh, among even less likely causes suggested for the death of the dinosaurs are poison gases, volcanic dust, meteorites, comets, sunspots, God's will, mass suicide. What'd they use? Do you have these guys that were little guns shooting themselves or something? How how'd they do that? In wars, they had dinosaur wars. Okay, but here's here's the issue. Here's the issue that the evolutionists have the biggest problem with. Now comes the important question: What caused all these extinctions of one particular at one particular point in time, approximately 65 million years ago, of the dinosaurs? Dozens of reasons have been suggested, some serious and sensible, others quite crazy, and it, others merely as a joke, yet every year people come up with new theories on this thorny problem. The trouble is that if we are to find just one reason to account for them all, it would have to explain not the deaths all at the same time of animals on land and animals living in the sea, but in both cases, and just to summarize this, in both cases, why the dinosaurs disappear and almost nothing else did? What happened 65 million years ago that wiped out the dinosaurs and almost nothing else? There is no answer. The evolutionists have no answer. And that's how he concludes the book. We have no idea what happened to the dinosaurs. He has no idea. Well, I know. I have another, you know, like the, the God's lawnmowers, I have another pet theory as to what happened to the dinosaurs. Okay? Uh, you see, dinosaurs can't, couldn't read because they had cataracts or became blind. <laughs> so they couldn't read the little warning on the packs. You see, that's what happened. Okay? But seriously, from a creationist perspective, they went on the ark, they came off the ark, no longer a tropical environment, a cold, sometimes hospital, very difficult environment. And over time, I'm sure they reproduced and spread, but over time, they died out. And maybe man killed them off too because they probably were a bit of a pest. I get a little annoyed at a 20 foot lizard crawling around in my garden, wouldn't you? So maybe man killed them off too. And some may have persisted. Mokili Membi, Thunderbirds, Black Dragon, maybe that pterodactyl in the, in the uh, cave in the uh, uh, railroad excavation of France. I don't know. But that's what I think happened to them in reality. And I want to summarize with my favorite evolution verse. And this is why dinosaurs are worth us looking into. As an adult, seriously, I got other things to do than read about dinosaurs. And I'll bet you do too, right? But why are we here? Because we're creationists. And there are people in the world who are riding the, the, the ship of evolution straight into hell because they think that they came about by chance and that there's no God in existence that put them here, that loves them, to whom they're accountable for, who sent his son to die for them so that he, you could, they could be redeemed and spend eternity in heaven with that God who created them and put them here. They actually think that's not true. And I was talking to a preacher's wife just this afternoon, or this, this morning, who, who doesn't think Christ was real and that he died. A, a preacher's wife in Wheatland, Wyoming, of all places. This is my favorite creationist verse, and this is why I'm into creationism and think talking about dinosaurs is important. The wise man scales the city of the mighty to bring down the stronghold in which they trust. And if we're going to see those people go from hell to heaven, we have to be trained and we got to be ready to scale the city of the mighty evolution and bring it down so that they can put their trust 
and a genuine Savior. Amen? Does it make sense? We're done. Yeah, I can entertain questions. I probably can't answer them, but I'd take a shot at them. Between me and everyone else, I'll bet we can answer them, right? I have read that there are very, very few genuine, complete, skeletal remains of Very few. The rest that you see in museums and all are theoretical inventions. So, uh, are you saying that you don't think the dinosaurs were indeed genuine creatures? Oh, yes, I do. But many of the skeletal, many parts mm-hmm. of the skeletal constructions that we see in museums are mm-hmm. not actually bones themselves, mm-hmm. theorized and created casts mm-hmm. of plaster or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's true. Now, if if you go to Peabody Museum, you'll find the real bones on display there. That I know because I checked on that. But largely, museum displays are casts of bones, and when they find incomplete creatures, they do fill in the blanks from other creatures. They found a lot. They found thousands of incomplete bits of dinosaurs. I mentioned earlier, there are only as of ten years ago, there are only about fifteen hundred complete dinosaur skeletons in the whole world. And I think there are only two or three T. rex skeletons included in that. Found one in Russia and one in China, if my memory's right, and I may not be right on that. But in the last 10 years, they've actually found three, four, five, a whole bunch of, of complete T. rex skeletons. And Tyrannosaurus Sioux is one of the most famous <coughs> and notorious examples of that. But Jack Horner's found two other complete T. rex skeletons in, uh, uh, out in Montana. Uh, so there are more. There are not as many as you'd think, and for as much as they push around facts about dinosaurs, there really isn't that much evidence to base a lot of the ideas on. So you're absolutely right to be very cautious and watch out for the green chickens when they start talking about dinosaurs. And Hubble Space Telescope pictures, too, by the way. There's more green chickens there than there are dinosaurs. Yes? I I wanted to mention you earlier talking about the T-Rex team. Believe it or not, the Denver Museum, I was there three years ago, they even have on their display the scientists now believe that they weren't meat eaters because of the amount of gum per tooth. So they had maybe about that much gum, just to give you a crude illustration.